Recently, at the 2019 World Yo-Yo Contest, multi-time world champion Hajime Mura performed a 4A performance entirely with solo hand. This was one of the most iconic freestyles in yo-yo history and will be remembered forever. I was lucky enough to be able to see this freestyle live, and it really kind of got the ball rolling in my head. I should learn how to do solo hand. Now, before I'm able to do anything as crazy as what he is doing, I needed to learn the basics. The first step in learning solo hem is getting down the basic roll or shuffle, and the bind, which looks like this. It may appear simple, but anyone who has tried solo hem before knows how hard it really is. Now a quick background on this thing we call solo hem. Solo ham is a type of yo-yoing in which a player performs tricks using two off-string yo-yos. It is known to be extremely difficult and it is a very risky move to make on stage specifically. Usually, 4A or off-string yo-yo players will do the majority of their freestyle using just one off-string yo-yo and one string. Some of the more daring off-string players will pick up an extra yo-yo towards the end of their freestyle and perform solo ham tricks. Hajime Mira, on the other hand, started with two off-string yo-yos and did an entire performance just with solo ham. And so in this video, I'm going to show my progression in learning the basics of solo ham. Before I even attempted to learn solo ham, I had to make a goal for myself. And it goes as follows. I want to be able to perform the solo ham shuffle for three or more seconds and complete it with a proper bind, getting both yo-yos back to my hand. And so this is day one, hour zero of learning solo ham. So, on the first day, I kind of just jumped right in headfirst. It was really pretty rough. I really struggled to get the yo-yos going for even more than a second, and they kept like launching off the string. I quickly realized that this challenge was going to be a lot harder than I expected. Yo! That was kinda it, I'm just saying. Just a couple things I'm noticing. This trick really is very similar to boingy boing. It's like a lot of just like that rhythm. It's looking a lot better from where I started. Like it, it's kind of like that. Well, of course when that happens, but. sure what I need to be doing differently. I'm gonna try some different things. So at the end of day two, I really hadn't made too much progress. I was trying different things here and there, but nothing really seemed to be working well for me. It was a little bit discouraging. But then again, I was only two days in. One thing I'm a little bit confused about is when I start doing like the bouncing motion, do I have these hands close together or far apart? I can't tell which one is better. That's enough for today. And so, time went on. There were slight victories, but many, many failures. Sometimes I would be able to get the rolling motion for a couple of seconds, and sometimes Yo would just jump off the string immediately. I really felt so awkward when doing this trick, and I could see that my rhythm was just like off. My hands weren't really like moving at the right times at the right speeds. And let me tell you, it was starting to get exhausting. I had already put in a few hours into this skill and I really just like wasn't getting anywhere. Basically what I'm figuring out is I think it's I think it's a matter of the rhythm. It's kind of like boing boing how you have to really figure out when to move your hand up and down. It's hard to figure out though. I'm not quite sure, but what I'm seeing is that in a good run, like a good attempt, 
The arrows are spaced out pretty well, and in a bad one, they're all at the bottom of the string, just going like that. At this point, I was starting to get frustrated. Initially, I had thought that this challenge would be extremely easy, but clearly it was harder than I expected. I realized I needed some help. At this point, I hadn't used any resources or help to learn this skill. I was simply trying a bunch of different things out and seeing if they worked, and I had no like official instruction. So I did what any Gen Z individual does and turned to the internet for help, naturally. Specifically, I watched Rei Iwakura's tutorials for solo ham on YouTube. Rei is a multi-time 4A world champion, and he's basically a solo ham legend. The next few days were dedicated to trying out the techniques and strategies that I learned in the tutorial. Oh man, this is tough, I'll be honest. I'm actually struggling here. Over time, I saw a bit of progress this day, getting the shuffling motion for a little bit longer, but I still was pretty far away from my goal. I experienced all kinds of failures. Sometimes the yo's would clash, other times the yo's would get out of rhythm, and best of all, when the yo didn't even get on the string. It was really frustrating. I tried changing different things, but nothing's working. Because clearly, I'm just not... I guess I'm not getting the rhythm right? So, at the end of day 5, I decided I needed some more help. I decided to reach out to a solo ham expert who I actually knew personally. This was none other than Connor Seals. And so I sent him this video. Hey Connor, I hope all is well with you and you are staying safe and healthy. So right now I'm gonna show you what I've currently got with a solo ham. In general, I feel like I've got the like kind of throw and catch step really well down. I can get that like nine out of 10 times. The part I'm struggling with is just getting repeated rolls that are consistent and stopping the yo-yos from like kind of clashing into each other after a few repetitions. In general, I feel like that's a pretty consistent problem that I run into there, where initially it looks like it's doing great, however the O's start to collide and eventually they kind of just rolling on top of each other like that. And so a couple factors that I'm considering are how high I actually throw this yo before it starts the rotation. In addition, I'm wondering if there's an issue in regards to the placement of my right hand in accordance to my left. So whether or not I'm going like this, or I should be moving this arm back a little bit, going like this, or they should be right on top of each other going like this. And then in addition, I'm also wondering if the rhythm, the up and down movement of my right hand, is what's causing the problems. Because when I first learned boingy boing, the problem that I think I had and a lot of other people had was just incorrect rhythm of moving our hand up and down. It just like, it wouldn't work. And so it could be that I'm just having a problem with the rhythm, you know, moving my hand up and down and getting that in a proper rhythm in relation to the yo-yo moving. And just a little bit later, I got a response. What's going on, Yo Yo Joe? It's Connor. Uh, I just finished watching your video and it looks awesome. You've already made so much progress and I look forward to seeing how much more progress you continue to make as you learn the cool yo-yo style of solo hand. The main issue that I saw that you were bumping into was the rhythm and the pacing of your right hand while doing the solo hand rolls. I noticed while both of the yo-yos were in the mount, uh, your hand was going a little too fast, and since your hand was going a little fast, uh, the yo-yo's motion was not able to be kept circular. Instead, the yo-yos were, they were circular, and then they started to go up in an oval, and then the yo-yos started to fall down on cla and clash on each other. And so, the reason that happened is because the pacing of your hand uh, was a little fast, and every time you moved your hand downward, the next yo-yo wasn't ready to receive that motion and receive that momentum to push the yo-yos together. When you have your timing slightly off by a little bit, over time it makes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger uh, effects on the way the yo-yos roll over each other. So that's the reason it looked good at first, but then uh, since your timing was a little off, the yo-yos started to 
go in that oval and clash on each other. And to all the other viewers out there who are trying to learn solo ham, they might be running into the same problem. And that is the number one thing that I want everyone to remember about solo ham if they're trying to learn, is that solo ham is all about rhythm and timing. Solo ham is a skill that is really different from 1A yo-yoing, and it's also pretty different than regular 4A in the sense that you're either all in or you're out because you can't really like try to learn a solo ham trick and you can't just stop in the middle of the trick and pause and try to evaluate where you are and then try again like every time you attempt a trick you're either going to succeed or you're going to fail and you have to keep on trying so it can get kind of strenuous in that way when you're learning a 1a trick you might be able to land in the mount and then you can just pause and you can say oh i need to go on this string and then you can like take it step by step and go slowly but with solo ham you can't really take it slow you kind of have to learn as you go you just have to fail hundreds of times until your body starts to get used to that rhythm and pacing. If any of you have ever tried to learn how to juggle or have tried to learn uh, Diablo juggling, it's a very similar aspect where you're either all in or you're out. That's one of the main reasons why Silham is so difficult to learn. And speaking of difficulty, the next thing that I want people to remember about Silham is that it's pretty difficult to learn in the same sense that yo-yoing is difficult to learn. Uh, for those of you who are trying to learn Soloham and you're having a hard time getting that rhythm down or being able to learn a new trick, there's nothing wrong with taking a break and putting it down for a week or two. Uh, I do that all the time. Like when I was trying to learn the trick called C Fan, it's a really cool trick that I wanted to learn for so long. And it took me two years to figure out how to do it because I would attempt it and it would look terrible. And then I would decide to just give it a break and try it a couple months later. And then I did that for two years and I finally figured out how to do it. So there's nothing wrong with taking a break. So yeah, those are a couple areas of advice for people that are trying to learn Soloham. Firstly, it's all about rhythm and it's all about timing. And secondly, uh, the thing you need to remember is Soloham is difficult to learn. Uh, you might need to take a break every once in a while. Don't get too down on yourself. I've been playing Soloham for uh, four years now, and it's been pretty on and off, you know, it's, I haven't been doing it every day for four years, but I've been able to take breaks and uh, try to push myself to learn new things, but it's a really fun style of yo-yo, and I'm looking forward to you guys learning how to do it. So, with my new knowledge from Connor's response, I was really ready to try out some new things. So this day was truly dedicated to just trying out a bunch of different things and seeing what worked and seeing what didn't. And so over time, I tried more and more new things. And then one day, something made a difference. Ooh. And so I went with it. I tried keeping my hands closer together. And for the first time in a really long time, I started to actually see some improvement. It was refreshing and motivating. Still, however, I had a ways to go. By day eight, I was really seeing some improvement. The yo's seemed to be actually like spaced out a lot better than before, and I felt like I was actually starting to get the rhythm down. However, little did I know, life was about to get crazy. Around this time, school started getting more and more demanding. I really struggled to find time to practice solo ham and like really put in some effort into each practice session. And you know, every now and then I would pick up the yo's and give it a quick go. I took about a five week break actually when AP tests were coming because I really needed to study for those and get some college credit before I graduated. Once my tests were over and I had graduated high school, I got back at it. I started practicing more and more and I started reaching out to other solo ham experts seeking more advice. I posted on 
on Instagram some videos of me attempting solo ham, asking the general public for advice. I also kept in close contact with Connor and sent videos of my progression, asking for more advice. During this time, I actually didn't record much, simply because I was trying out a bunch of new techniques and I wasn't actually making like specific progress, so I didn't really end up recording that. The main thing that I tried out and actually found was successful during this time was moving both of my hands together at the same time, almost as a unit, as you can see here. Initially, I had tried moving just one hand by itself, but it felt a lot more comfortable to move both of my hands together almost as a unit. The rhythm felt, you know, a lot more natural, but I still wasn't totally there. But then something happened. I got a piece of advice from Connor Seals that changed my life. He advised I tried doing solo ham with just one hand to get the feel for it. When I first saw this message, I was like, um, okay, I can try, but how would doing soul ham with one hand make it any easier? Wouldn't that be a lot harder? But then, a little bit later, I captured something on camera that was truly amazing. Something magical. Oh my god, I'm doing it. Oh my gosh. That was kind of it. That was kind of it. It like, it just lined up. Like the rhythm just made sense. Let's try it again. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've been trying this for so long. That's the best I've ever gotten. It just, it feels right. Like I feel like I know when to pull up and went to pull down. That felt good. That felt really good. Now, I still wasn't quite a pro at the one-handed soul ham, and as you can see that here, I still had some work to do, but this was progress, real progress, something I hadn't had for a long time. That's it right there. Yes, yes. At this point, I wasn't actually sure if what I was doing was counted as solo ham. So I took to Instagram to find out. I posted a video of me doing one-handed solo ham, asking if this constituted as solo ham, and I got a resounding yes. But the challenge was not over, not yet. If you remember correctly, in the beginning, the goal stated I must do solo ham for three seconds and properly bind the yo-yo. So I spent the next couple of days perfecting the one-handed solo ham, and then I worked on getting that bind. <laughs> so sick, oh my gosh. The main thing I struggled with when trying to bind the yo-yo was disrupting the cycle of the yo-yos. So in order to properly bind a solo ham yo-yo, you have to actually disrupt the cycle of the yo-yos going around. So as you can see here, they're going around in a circle and to properly bind it, you need to shoot one of them up into the air and catch it on another string. And after that, you kind of hop the yo-yo into the air and use your leg to bind one of the yo-yos. So initially, I really did have some trouble disrupting the cycle of the yo-yos and getting that timing just perfect. However, on the side, I did practice the leg section of the bind a ton. My thought process behind that was basically, once I figured out how to interrupt the rhythm of the yo-yos, I really wanted to be ready to bind and finish the thing. Once I mastered getting the leg section of the bind, I got to work on interrupting that rhythm. I woke up one day and I just felt good. I said to myself, this is going to be the day that I complete the solo ham challenge. And so, I got to work. Oh my gosh, I finally did it!
did. That's it. Challenge complete. I don't know how many months that took me, I don't know how many hours that was, I don't know how many times I dropped the yo-yos, but that is it. That, that felt good. <laughs> I feel like that's it for this video. We've, we've come a long way. We've gone through some pretty stressful times, we've gone through failure, we've gone through mini success here and there, we've asked people for advice, we've taken some pieces of advice and found other pieces of advice didn't work so well for us, but this is it. That just happened. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I never thought I'd be making a video like this, but in general, I'm super happy that I did. That feeling is just, oh, it's so good that I set a goal and I completed it, and that feels amazing. So try setting a goal for yourself that you don't really think is possible, and uh, see what you can do. Keep working at it. That's it. Wow. That's it for this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Please leave a like on this video for all the hard work and hours spent working on this solo hand, and subscribe if you haven't already. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Woo!